Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking all about my five handmade essentials for summer. Hello, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me for this video and welcome if you're new around here. It's really lovely to have you. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my five essential sewing patterns for summer. And I'm doing this as part of a new hashtag that's been set up on YouTube, which is hashtag five handmade essentials. And this hashtag was set up by Sarah of Naughty Gnome Crafts. And she shared her five handmade essentials from five different categories. And then she tagged some fellow vloggers. And I've been tagged by Sir Amelia to join in too. And I'm really excited to join in. I've had a lot of fun thinking of my five favourite sewing patterns that I couldn't do without in summer in these five categories. So the five um, categories I'm going to be talking about in this video are, I'll pop them all up here, my essential top for summer, my essential bottom for summer, my essential layering piece, essential one piece and an essential wild card. I'm going to share the sewing pattern I picked for each of these categories and I'm going to share my versions of each pattern because for quite a few of the patterns I've chosen I've made more than one version and a bit of a variety so I'm really looking forward to sharing them all with you and talking about why they are my essentials for summer and I'll make sure to link all of the patterns I talk about in this video in the information down below and I'll also include links for any fabrics I share that are still available too. So do check that information out. And if you have any other questions on anything I talk about today, feel free to drop me a line in the comments and I'll be very happy to answer. But now let's get started on my first handmade essential for summer. So the first category for my five handmade essentials for summer is an essential top pattern. And for this category, I had to go for my favorite go to t-shirt pattern because it is a pattern I wear all summer. I've got quite a few different versions and I find they work so well with lots of other handmade garments in my wardrobe. And this is my favourite t-shirt pattern here. It is the paper cut pattern solar tea and sweatshirt pattern. So I've got the old pattern envelope here, it's since been rebranded, it used to be called the Kyoto sweater and tea. But what I love about this pattern is it's just a really boxy relaxed fit t-shirt and I do find it just feels so comfy to wear and it goes with so many things. I'll show you the line drawings. This is a t-shirt version here. It's got a really boxy relaxed fit, a round neck, a dropped shoulder, and you can add on this optional ruffle into the sleeve seam here, which is a really cute detail. And I've made versions both with and without the ruffle, so I thought I'd share with you a few of my favourite versions I love to go out in summer. The first version is one I made with the ruffle, so you can see the cute little ruffle here on the sleeve. And this is a version I made in a bamboo jersey, which I find creates a really lovely drapey t-shirt and works really well with the ruffles. They're not too bulky, they just drape really nicely. And this is a bamboo jersey I originally got from Backstitch in this lovely bright red colour. I've also got a version in navy too, exactly the same bamboo jersey and navy with a ruffle. And I find they're both on regular rotation in my summer wardrobe. Then I've also made a few versions without the ruffle and I find that creates just a really nice, simple, basic, boxy t-shirt. And I had a bit of a fun with the print on this one here. This one I made in a pointel cotton jersey. You can see the pointel there if I hold it up close. I got quite a while ago from Fabric Godmother. I don't think this fabric is still in stock anymore. But I love the mustard with the leopard print on. I thought it was really funky. Um, and yeah, I just made the basic version. It's a really nice one to just throw on with a pair of jeans or a pair of shorts. One of my more recent versions is this one here, a stripy one in a yarn dyed striped cotton jersey from First for Fabrics. This is a fairly recent purchase and they stock this fabric in a few different colours. I'm not sure that this navy and white colourway is in stock but I'll um, link below any colourways that are in stock of it. It's a really nice quality yarn dyed stripy jersey so you've got the stripes on both sides and I added on some white ribbing around the top um, and I just find it's just a really nice simple white t-shirt, it's not tight fitting, it's nice and loose, so comfy for warmer weather. And what I've also done with this pattern, I find it really versatile, is I've lengthened it to turn it into a shirt and um, a t-shirt dress too. So this is my longer t-shirt dress version here. 
I made this one another cotton jersey without the ruffle again in this really pretty watercolour print and as you can see I basically just added some length onto it um, graded out a little bit, sort of smoothed the lines out a little bit um, for my hips so just took the lines out a little bit and took it down to t-shirt length and I love throwing this one on at the end of a hot day where I've got home and I just want something really nice and comfy to wear so that's my go-to sort of a hot day dress and it's perfect from the beach to cover up too and I'll pop up some photos of me wearing my various solar tees styled in different ways as I talk a bit about the sizing on this pattern just so you can see how they look and how I find they work with loads of different things in my wardrobe. So in terms of sizing, the papercut tee is available from a UK 6 up to the UK 20, which takes you up to a bust of 46 and a half inches. And I've always made the straight UK 8, which I made based on my bust measurement. And I find it gives a really nice relaxed fit. It's definitely designed to be a little bit oversized. I just find it really comfy to wear. And hopefully you can see from the photos that I love to mix and match my solar tees with lots of different items in my wardrobe. And yeah, they're on regular rotation in my wardrobe through summer, so it definitely had to be my summer essential handmade top. So the next category for my five handmade essentials for summer is an essential bottom sewing pattern. And for me, this had to be a skirt sewing pattern because I definitely tend to reach for skirts a lot more in the summer than I do, say, a pair of shorts or a pair of summery trousers. And so I decided to pick a pattern that's actually fairly new to me. I only got it at the beginning of this year. I can really see this one becoming a firm favourite in summer, both this summer and in future summers too. And this is the pattern here. It is the Maeve skirt pattern by True Bias. So it's a really lovely woven skirt pattern with an elasticated waist. And then what I love about this pattern is how many variations you get built into it. So it's got a gathered skirt on it, which you can either make as a sort of mini length or a midi length or a maxi length. And then there are also lots of tiers as options and you can sort of mix and match how many tiers you want to add. So I think it's one of those patterns where you can make it several different times and each version could look quite different. And the pattern also has optional pockets and optional drawstring. And it comes together really nicely. I find true bias patterns always sew up really nicely. And it's got a good size range too. There are two size bands available on this one. There's a US 0 to 18 and then a US 14 to 30 which takes you up to a waist of 62 and a half inches. So I've made two versions of the Maeve skirt so far and I love them both. And it's definitely a pattern that I know I'll be revisiting. I'm definitely not gonna finish at two versions. So this is my first version I made here. And as you can see, I went for the mini version for this one. And I made it in this beautiful viscose fabric by Atelier Dupe. I'll link it down below. It's a fairly new fabric by them. Um, it's this gorgeous sort of pink and purpley tie-dye. I love all the different sort of lilacs and the sort of floaty, swishy, pretty nature of this fabric. So as you can see, it's got the elasticated waist with the drawstring. I added in the pockets and then I on a little ruffle at the bottom. I did play around with the length of the tiers slightly. I lengthened this top tier slightly and shortened this bottom tier slightly to give it a slightly smaller ruffle flounce. And it's lovely to wear this one. It's so swishy. It's perfect for a hot summer's day when I team it with say like a vest top or something like that. And in terms of sizing, I went based on my hip measurement for this one because I thought I wanted plenty of room in the hips and plenty of gathering. My waist measurement is slightly smaller um, than my hip measurement in terms of sizes. So my hip would put me as a size of four, whereas my waist would put me as a size of zero. But I didn't bother grading it at the waist. I just cut a slightly shorter piece of elastic and gathered it a little bit more. So it's maybe a little bit more gathered in here than as the pattern intended, but I quite like that. So. That is my first version. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on or start up for summer. And then I've got my second version here too, which is quite different from my first version. And for my second version, I decided to use a hack that True Bias posted on the website, which I'll link down below. To turn the mode skirt into a skirt with a curved hem, so it sort of dips down to about midi length at the front and back, and then comes up at the sides. So this is my hacked mode skirt here. Um, as you can see, if I hold up, Hi, it's got this lovely curved hem at the bottom that comes up at the sides. Just here you can see the side split here. And again, I made it with the optional drawstring at the front and with the pockets, which are quite handy. And for this first, I made it in this beautiful viscose chalet from Minerva. I was gifted this fabric in exchange for a blog post that I wrote for them. I'll link that blog post down below in case you fancy having a read all about this skirt. But I love this fabric. I love that it's got sort of like a black base with lots of pops of colour. 
I think you can either wear like a black top with it to keep it simple or pick out one of all of the lovely colours that are in the skirt. And it's lovely and swishy as well so I quite like how it covers my legs up but keeps me quite cool in summer. And I'll put a picture of me wearing my second mauve skirt version too so you can see what that one looks like on. I love both of my mauve skirts, I can definitely see myself making this pattern again like I mentioned. It's really comfy to wear with the elasticated waist. I particularly love it in a really swishy, drapey fabric. I think it's just perfect as a summer staple. So the next category for my five handmade essentials for summer is an essential layering piece. And for this category, I did think about picking a cardigan pattern because I do love throwing on a cardigan over a dress when it gets a bit cooler in summer. But I haven't really got an all time favourite cardigan pattern. I've got a few patterns I've used once or twice, but not one that particularly stands out. So I thought, what else might be a great pattern to talk about as a layering piece? And one particular pattern sprung to mind is my favourite jacket that I love to put on in summer when it gets a bit chilly and I find it's just a perfect layering piece for this time of year. And so the pattern is this one here, the Hovea jacket by Megan Nielsen Patterns. I really like Megan Nielsen patterns. I love the look and feel of them and the Hovea jacket is a really nice one to sew. So it's for this jacket that you can make in three different lengths, either a crop length or more of a hip length and a longer length. And it's got quite a boxy, relaxed feel and fit to it with a dropped shoulder. I'll show you the line drawings. There are two main variations to it. Either you can make this version here, it's got kind of this curved hem at the bottom and is finished all around the neckline with bias binding. Or you can make this version here that has the neck band. And both versions can be made in three different lengths. They all have these angled pockets on them. There are a couple of optional ties or a belt you can add to sort of cinch it in, or you can just wear it sort of loose and relaxed. And it's got a really good size range on this one too. There are two size ranges, a US 0 to 20, and there's a curve range which goes from 14 to 34, again US sizing, and takes you up to a bust of 60 inches. So yeah, very size inclusive pattern, and one that sews together really nicely. And you can make it in a quilted fabric and add the bias binding, or you can make it lined or unlined. So loads of different options built into this one. And I made a version about a year or so ago and I've used it loads in summer as a bit of a throw on piece. I find it just adds a bit of warmth and it goes with lots of things in my summer wardrobe. So here is my version of the Hovia jacket and I really love it. Um, I made the cropped version, although I lengthened it slightly because I do have a longer torso. So you can see it's got these lovely angled pockets that are perfect for popping in my phone or keys or that sort of thing if I'm out and just want to take a couple of basic essential items. And as you can see, I made a version that's lined and the fabric I use for my version, I love these sort of summery colours. The outer fabric is a jacquard cotton by Merchant and Mills, which has a quilted look to it. Um, it's really lovely and squishy and soft, so perfect for a lightweight jacket. And then again, I went for a lightweight lining. This is a Liberty Cotton Lawn lining. I love the floral print on it, and I thought they picked out the pink of the outer fabric. I added a little hook here, so it's mostly in my downstairs cupboard, ready for me to throw on as I head out when the weather is warmer. So. That is my perfect layering piece for summer. I'll put a picture of me wearing it. In terms of sizing, I made the smallest size on this one based on my bust measurement. My waist and hip measurements would put me as a slightly larger size, a size four. But when I had a look at the finished garment measurements on this one, it's designed to be a bit oversized and have quite a relaxed fit. So going on my bust measurement is fine. There's still plenty of room in it. I quite like to turn the sleeves up a bit so you can see a pop of the Liberty lining. But yeah, it's just a great throw on piece. I haven't got any fastenings on the front because I don't tend to wear it in really cold weather where I'd want to do it up. It is just a great layering piece for summer. So that is what I went for. As my essential layering piece for summer, my lovely Hovia jacket by Megan Nielsen Patterns. It's just a really lovely, relaxed one. Um, and I'd love to make another version too, actually. It's definitely a pattern like the May skirt where I think I really should revisit it because it is a real summer staple, this one. So the next category for my five handmade essentials for summer is an essential one piece. And I think I found this category the hardest one to choose just one sewing pattern for, because there are so many lovely one piece summery patterns out there, both dresses and play suits. I find it really hard to narrow it down to just one pattern. But I have chosen just one pattern. And what I decided to go for is a summer sundress pattern. And it's one I always love reaching for every summer. I've made three versions of this pattern, one for each of the last three summers and I reach for all of them all of the time and whenever I wear them I feel really comfy and I feel really good in them and I think it's just a really classic sundress pattern that has some really pretty details to it so it's a real essential in my summer wardrobe. 
and it is this pattern here is the Ariana woven dress pattern by Style Arc. And I think it's just a really classic, pretty sundress pattern. It's got a princess seamed bodice and a button down front and then little strappy straps and a gathered skirt. I do love a gathered skirt. I do love a button down front and I love the shaping of princess seams. It has lots of my sort of favourite things all in one pattern. Another thing I love about this pattern is there's a sheared back bodice here. So it means it's really comfy to wear. It's not too tight and restrictive, but also because the shearing adds a bit of stretch to what is a woven pattern. It, you can create a really lovely shape and it can fit really nicely around the bodice. It's also got these optional patch pockets you can add on that are quite nice and practical. Um, and yeah, it just comes together really nicely. and I think creates a really pretty shape to it too. In terms of size, there's a really wide size range available in this pattern as well. It goes from a UK 4 up to a UK 30, which takes you up to bust of 58 and a quarter inches. So I'll show you the three versions of the Ariana woven dress that I've made. They're all quite different to each other, but it's really hard to pick a favourite because I really love all of them. But this is the first version I made, I think three summers ago now. And I made it in this pretty, it's almost ditzy floral cotton lawn fabric. It's got berries in it too, in sort of purples and pinks. And I went for purple buttons to tie in with the purple in the fabric. And I love the sweetheart neckline on the Ariana dress too. That's another really pretty feature. Then I made it in a midi length as per the pattern. I think the Ariana woven dress was the first midi length dress pattern I made. Before then, I'd mainly gone for above the knee style dresses, but the Ariana really converted me to a midi length and I love it now. Then it's got the po patch pockets on. I added patch pockets to this one. And as you can see at the back, here is the panel of shearing, which makes it really comfy, but also gives a really lovely shape around the bodice. So that is my first version. I'll put a picture of me wearing that one. The second version I made two summers ago, I made in a lightweight cotton fabric. So this is my second version. It's a lot lighter weight than my first version. Actually, you can see the pockets hang a little bit more down. This is lovely lightweight cotton fabric that has a bit of a nautical feel, I think, to it with these sort of blue and pink stripes on it. This one was quite tricky um, in terms of stripe matching. So there's lots of pieces um, to create the bodice. So you can see I had to sort of stripe match down the front here and on the sides. Um, so it's quite time consuming this one. And I went for a white lining. The bodice is fully lined and I went with just a straight white lining because the fabric is fairly sheer. So I thought if I went for stripes on the inside too, be able to see them coming through. So yeah, and there's on little pale pink buttons on there, which I really love. I think tie nice with the pink colour. And I had a bit of fun with the stripe direction. So as you can see, I went for horizontal stripes on the bodice and then vertical stripes on the skirt. And add on these patch pockets again with the horizontal stripes. And you can see again, it's got a shearing panel on the back too. This one's lovely and floaty for a hot summer's day because it's a really lightweight fabric. Oh, and I'll put a picture of me wearing that one too. Um, and then my final version, which is my most recent, recent one that I made last summer, I decided to go for a, just a plain black version. I thought that'd be quite classic. This is a black Pima cotton lawn fabric and I went for black buttons too. There are buttons there, I just haven't got them all done up at the moment on the hanger. And for this version I decided to omit the patch pockets but I instead added in inseam pockets just to give a slightly different look to it. So I've got inseam pockets, I just borrowed a pattern piece from a different pattern for those. Again it's got the shearing at the back, I love how classic this one is. I wore this one at the weekend actually for a hot day when I went into town with my mum and my daughter. And it kept me nice and cool, actually. And I'll put a picture up of this one, too. They're all midi length, but I love how they're all different with a different fabric. It's such a comfy one to wear. I'd really recommend this pattern if you want a really lovely classic sundress. One thing to mention about Style Arc patterns, if you haven't tried them before, is their instructions are on the brief side. So if you're fairly new to sewing and you fancy trying the Ariana woven dress, I'd recommend You've got a few other sewing projects under your belt first before you try it, just because the instructions don't hold your hand quite as much as some of the other indie pattern companies do. But it's a really lovely pattern which comes together really nicely and I really love to wear my three versions. I find them really comfy and I feel really good in them too. So the Style Arc Ariona woven dress is definitely my summer essential when it comes to an essential one piece. So that brings me on to the final category of my five handmade essentials which is a bit of a fun one, it is an essential wild card. And I had a little think about what I could choose for this category, because I guess you could really choose absolutely anything. But what I decided to go for is a pattern that I love as it is, but I also love to hack. And it's a pattern I've hacked loads of different times, so it really is a bit of a wild card in that I think it's one you can really turn into anything you want to turn it into. 
So I decided to go for this pattern here, which is the Ogden Cami pattern by True Bias. So it's a really lovely, simple cami top pattern that's perfect for summer in itself. It's designed for woven fabrics. It's got these lovely spaghetti straps, a deep V at the front and back, and quite a straight fit to it. There are two size categories, a US 0 to 18 and a US 14 to 30, which takes you up to a bust of 57 and a half inches. And the 14 to 30 category has a couple of different um, variations on this version here. It has slightly wider straps and also a bust start built in to add a bit more shape around that area. But yeah, I love the Ogden cami as a simple cami top for summer. It's a really great basic, but it's also so fun to hack because it's so simple. So I thought I'd share my simple Ogden camis and then also talk a bit about the hacked versions I've made too. So I've got a couple of simple cami versions here to share first. Here are two of my basic Ogden camis I love to wear in summer. This version here I made in a beautiful Atelier Brunette viscose fabric that's really, really delicate and perfect for hot weather because it's so lightweight and floaty. And the other version I've got on the other side of this hanger is another viscose version, so another really swishy fabric. This is a really pretty one I got quite a long time ago and um, with this lovely large scale sort of almost watercolour floral print on. So as you can see both versions are quite different to each other but I love to wear both of them. Particularly with say a midi length skirt or tucked into a pair of shorts I find they work really well. But like I mentioned what I love about the Ogden cami and what makes it a real wild card for me is its hacking potential. So I've picked out three of my summary Ogden cami hacks that I've made to share with you in this video and the first one is a maxi length colour blocked tiered summer sundress version. So here it is. As you can see it's got the Ogden cami bodice with the spaghetti straps and the deep V at the front and back and I've cropped off the Ogden cami to just above my natural waist and added on these waist ties to cinch it in there and I've added on three tiers of gathered skirt and I've colour blocked it using these two different um, tensile fabrics which are lovely and delicate and lightweight and swishy so perfect for a maxi dress for a really hot day in these sort of shades of blue and white um, the different variations of it so I really enjoyed making this version it's lovely and lightweight and swishy I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on and I actually wrote up a blog post um, talking about how I made this one so I'll link it down below so my second Ogden cami hack has a bit of a baby doll dress vibe to it I think here it is this is a shorter dress, as you can see, it comes to just above my knee. And for this one, I decided to crop the bodice a little bit higher to give it more of an empire line style bodice. Then I added on a single tiered gathered skirt with inseam pockets. And I made a couple of tweaks to the cami itself for this one. I widened the strap slightly to give a bit more bra strap coverage. And I also brought the back up slightly because the back um, comes down quite low. And I just thought by bringing it up a bit again, it'll make sure my bra was covered at the back too. But I really love this sort of swishy, short, summery version. I made it in this gorgeous viscose chalet fabric from Minerva. I think this one is still in stock, so I'll make sure to link it down below. I love that it's got a bit of a twist on a classic leopard print because of the colours that are used. I think the teal and the neon green are really pretty and a little bit different. So this is a really fun, summery sundress to wear. And again, I'll put a picture up of me wearing this one. That's my second Ogden cami hack. So this is my third Ogden cami hack for summer and for this one I decided to make a midi length version so again I've cropped off the bodice for this version I've added on little waist ties like I did for my first hacked version and for this one I've added on two tiers one slightly longer tier and then one shorter tier at the bottom to create a midi length dress and I'll show you a picture in a moment so you can see exactly where that comes to but I had a lot of fun figuring out what length to make the tiers in this one it's another lovely swishy summery sundress that's perfect for hot weather and for this one I used a viscose fabric from Self Made. I think this one's out of stock now, but I just loved the leopard print. I love the colours in the leopard print and the scale of the leopard print on this one. I thought you can't go wrong with a leopard print sundress for summer, can you? So I'll put a picture up for this one too, so you can see what it looks like on. I love all three of my Ogden cami hacks, and I love the Ogden cami as a simple cami pattern as well, like I mentioned. So I think the fact it's so versatile and so fun to play around with makes it a perfect essential wild card for my five handmade essentials. So those are my five handmade essentials for summer. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing all about those five sewing patterns and why I picked each of them. I really enjoyed choosing them and they're definitely all patterns that I'm going to be reaching for a lot now the weather has got a bit hotter here. So I think now I need to tag a couple more sewing vloggers in case they'd like to join in with this hashtag too. 
I'm going to tag Liz, who is the baker that sews, and Becky, who is notes in the sewing room, as so I'd really love to hear about their five handmade essentials too. So thank you so much for joining me for this video, I really appreciate you watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to my channel, then I'd love it if you would subscribe and also press the bell icon, which means you'll be notified when I bring out my future videos. So thank you very much for watching. And if you have a particular sewing pattern that's a real essential for you for your summer wardrobe, I would love to hear about it. Please do drop me a line in the comments down below. I'm always looking for new sewing patterns. I love hearing about different patterns and I'm sure everyone else will be interested in reading some recommendations too. So yeah, thanks again for watching. I hope you have a lovely week and I'll hopefully see you for another video again soon. Bye.